you look at that? This is another episode of RC Modify. We have a GTR and it's gonna look similar to Brian's GTR R35 from Fast and Furious 6. I'm gonna keep it pretty simple. The doors and the hood will not be able to open. It's a little bit too complicated and it makes things too flimsy. This thing comes with a crazy body kit. I'm gonna be using an RMX 2.0 chassis. It's already got an air suspension effect installed. I'm gonna modify it somewhere to make it fit perfectly with the GTR. I got some rear mount spoiler brackets and the spoiler. We have some wheels and we're gonna put drift tires on them. And of course we have to install the engine sound system. For the paint I'm going with PS16 metallic blue followed by PS3 light blue and then PS1 white. There's no instructions at all. I was just gonna do it. to see the progress of your GTR. Okay, I think that would be it for me. I don't want to cut more than that. I'll use stickers for the rest of them. It's time for me to do some sanding. And there it is, I got it all cut and sanded all the edges. Before I move on, I'm gonna make a new steering wheel. This time I'm gonna be using a resin 3D printer, all provided by this video sponsor, Hey Gears. Everything arrived in big boxes, so I have to do a little unboxing. Man, do you see the BMW back there? It needs some love. One box down, two to go. Alright, here we go. The last box. <laughs> That's a heavy one. What we have here guys is the Autocraft Reflex from Hey Gears, the ultimate one-stop production platform. It's a lot bigger than I thought. Hey Gears also sent me some resins to try out. I got everything unboxed and here is everything. Oh yeah, that's very nice. I use the boxes to make the cabinets for them. Here they are on the cabinets. Solid, heavy, well-built machines. I got them sitting on separate cabinets so that they don't interfere with each other. 
the setup is super simple you only have to do this once basically just remove packaging plug them in and turn them on on your computer go to blueprint.haygears.com sign up for an account using your email connect the printer to Wi-Fi enter the Wi-Fi password and then hit OK add your printer using the serial number you can also add your printer using the blueprint go app open the app add new device input go to the settings on the printer and then basic info and there's your serial number now use the serial number on the app boom boom add new device and there you have it now on the washer go to setup and then Wi-Fi setup using the blueprint go app to add the washer on the app hit the plus sign and then hit connect via Bluetooth you should see the washer showing up connect it and then connect it to Wi-Fi and finally bind it as you can see it shows up on the app it's the same process with the Kira and there you have it they are all connected and now let's print something install the tray the sensor the bait now it's time for the resin The printer is now ready. Go to blueprint.haygears.com. Create new slicer. Choose device type. Resin tank. Application. Material. And then layer thickness. Hit confirm. Import the file. And that is the steering wheel that I just newly designed. It looks pretty good. Now click the support tab, click the print, and then auto support. Generate the support. Here we go, everything is nice and completed. All right, go to slice. Choose layer thickness, and then hit slice. Go ahead and view progress. It's done slicing. Now I'm gonna send this file to the printer, the washer, and the curer. So they will know exactly how long the print should be washed and cured. On the printer, just hit print. Print. And now we wait. After the print is done, tip the bed at an angle and wait for the resin to drip off of the bed. Now remove the print. Drop it in the bucket. Hey Gears, recommends 95% alcohol for cleaning. I can only find 91% alcohol from my local store. It seems to be working okay. Now start the washer. You don't have to calculate the wash time. The software already calculated everything for you. And it's done. Man, the washer is pretty cool. Stack the bucket on top of each other. This is the vent hole. Drain it down. Now you can pick up your print. You can break off the support, clean it before you cure it. Or you can cure it before you clean it. It's all up to you. Like I said, super easy one-stop production platform. After this, you can just keep printing. Or if you want to change the resin, here is how. Pull up the bottle, hit this button so that the bottle can stay in this position. Let the resin drip down for a little while. Take out the bottle, wipe off some excess, remove the big cap, use the strainer to filter the leftover resin. I'm wiping off some resin so that it doesn't drip down. I could clean the bed first if I wanted to actually. Now I'm gonna clean the bed using some alcohol to clean it all up. I use a soft paint brush to help with cleaning. Also the spray bottle comes in really handy. The bed is done. Now it's time for other pieces. 
Hey Gears has been in the professional business for a long time. I'm talking 3D printed medical devices. Their bigger machines can do amazing things. Recent 3D printing has come a long way and I'm glad I am getting into it now because everything is established and figured out a lot more than before. Instead of messing around with all the settings and everything, you just hit a few buttons and then it prints. I want you guys to help me by saying thank you to Hey Gears in the comment section. And there you have it. At this point, you can just pop in the new resin and then start printing again. There is one cool thing I need to tell you guys. This is one steering wheel. It takes about two hours to print. There are 15 steering wheels in this print. Also, it takes about two hours to print. Now that is crazy. Hey Gears also sent me a bunch of other colors. We have yellow, cyan, magenta, white, gray, transparent and black you can also mix them up and get the specific color that you want to check out hey gears the link is in the description i have one trick that i discovered to show you guys remove the support sand the support bumps clean it off using alcohol and the problem is the areas where you sand it turns gray. To fix that, I use this Forever Black Bumper and Trim Reconditioner. And just like that, the gray is gone and everything is nice and black. Just a cool little trick for you right there. I got the steering wheel. Now I'm gonna need a servo. I'm using an MG90D servo. I got an M2.5 threaded rod with a nut to lock it up. I can cut the rod down to a desired length and then install my steering wheel. It's moving freely right now, so I'll use super glue to glue it in place. And there you have it, a new steering wheel. That's the basic of it. The rest would be just how you mount it on the chassis. Gotta make some mounting brackets and stuff like that. So I'll do that real quick. Well, before that, I need to figure out how to mount the body. Right now, these magnets are a little bit too big. And so I'll make some 3D printed body posts. Prints are so accurate guys. Oh my god. All the tolerance, you know, you don't have to change much. Whatever you put in, that's what you get out. Wow. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> this is incredible. Yup. <laughs> First time. First try. Alright. I'm gonna cure them before I send them just because I don't want to wear gloves. And of course, I need to change the design a little bit. <laughs> Nothing is really finals around here. But I'm pretty sure I got the whole process down, you know, design, print, clean up, touch up, and then redesign. <laughs> and it goes around in circle until you reach the final product. Right in the middle of filming, this just arrived. Thank you everybody. Without you, without this grow button. It is huge, man. Right here should work just fine. Perfect. I think it's time for the wheels.
that one just ran away. <laughs> Foam tape. Gotta get myself some foam tape. I got it in almost there. I just need a little help. That's why I'm using this RC Drift Tire Installer. It's a lot of work. Some of you might wonder what this thing is. You can put the wheel here and then push it out of the tire like that. Oh yeah. It's gonna need some wheel spacers, as you can see. And I do have wheel spacers. I got some printed here. I got a bunch of parts designed and printed. I also got new rear body posts, steering wheel mount, exhaust tips, and some wheel spacers to try out. Now it's just a matter of putting things together. I've already shown you guys a lot of stuff here in the previous videos, so I will only show you guys the new tips and tricks. You can buy a bunch of stuff that I show in the videos on Dr. Dragon Wing Amazon's page. I take these two screws off and then use longer screws to mount the steering wheel mount. I use M2x8 to mount the servo on the steering wheel mount. So the extension nuts are too long and too big. I'm gonna use my new lathe to cut them off and make them smaller. The wheel nuts are machined nicely. That took a while. <laughs> Maybe I'll use brass next time so that it's easier to work with. I don't think these wheel nuts have to be that strong. The bracket broke off for the steering wheel, <laughs> so I made a beefy one.
Look at that fitment. Perfect. As you can see, the screw head is a little big. It pops out from the magnet. So I'm gonna turn a countersink for it a little bit so that the head won't pop out anymore. I can always use longer screws and put more magnets on these to lift the body up. Okay, we got the wheel, the wheel spacers, the wheel nuts, body poles, steering wheel. I think we're all set. It's time to get back to the body. Drill the holes really, really slow. If you do too much, you will just rip it and ruin the body. Time for some spoiler and brackets. The screws for the spoiler are silver. I'm gonna see if I can turn them black by using super blue. have to brush the screws first and then clean it with denatured alcohol or something like that. First, I'm gonna test it on the wheel nuts. I'll scuff it a little bit. That is crazy. That's pretty good. Wear protective gloves and eye protection. <laughs> yeah. I'm not touching it though. Allow to work 30 seconds. After I turn it black, I have to soak it in oil for 24 hours before I can use it. This one is specifically for steel. So there's one for aluminum, there's one for brass. I don't have to paint them, just turn them gunmetal. Now, time to soak them in water. I mean, oil. I turned the little screws black too. That's pretty cool. Okay, now back to this thing. Nope. <laughs> it doesn't work on stainless steel. I'll just find some screws, black screws later on. Wow, that is mint. All right, these are done being soaked in oil. They look nicer after they've been soaked in oil. Some of you might say, why don't I just paint them black? Well, if you paint them black, the paint will make the nuts and bolts bigger. Sometimes you can't even use the socket anymore and the paint doesn't even stick that well. This, it just turns black by itself. With this method, the dimensions are pretty much the same. As for the body, I got the wing and exhaust mounted. I think it looks pretty good now. I just got a mask and paint it. I'm gonna use the Cricut machine to cut some circles for the tail light. That was quick. <laughs> So there's a template for the windows and stuff that you can download from Pandora. You gotta have a Cricut machine, otherwise you're gonna hand cut or manually tape like I just did. It's a lot easier though with the Cricut machine, but you could still gotta do some photoshopping and get the size right. I mean, Pandora should just invest a little bit, you know? The masking tape already cut would be nice. I gotta say, taking time, doing some Photoshop and get it cut through the Cricut machine is really time saving and worth it. Also, headache saving. I got everything masked. It's time for some paint. Color time. Wow. I actually used a big can of black for polycarbonate body. It comes out pretty flat a little bit on the inside. Ooh, hoo -hoo. Watch this. Not completely perfect, of course, you know, it's just hard to do. 
to make it perfect just a little bit of um, imperfection but that's good enough it's so shiny does it have to be flat color the movie car has flat color so I'm gonna do the black trims and then follow with the flat clear on the whole thing So I just went ahead and painted the wing with the same color as the car but in reverse So white, light blue, metallic blue and then finally flat clear Because I sanded the plastic it became kind of grayish So of course I'm gonna use forever black bumper and trim reconditioner Besides that, I also do some masking for the inside so that I can tint the windshields and the windows with smoked PS31. Wow! I made some outside masking for it. Man, that's a lot of masking. This is it. This is the fun part, isn't it? <laughs> And again, it's been about 15 minutes. I'm just gonna rip everything off so that it will give me clean lines. Oh, and um, by the way, I just gave it a one wet coat and that was it. Some paint seeping under the tape is to be expected. Clean it up using the body cleaner. I got the edges cleaned up pretty good. The final piece of the puzzle, which is the PS55 flat clear from Tamiya. Gotta clean this up a little bit. Mask the inside and then paint it. You know, I thought this would be easy. <laughs> it's not. I'm gonna clean them up first and then paint them. Okay, I think I'm ready. This is the last time you're gonna see this body nice and shiny. Would you look at that? Oh my goodness, what a beauty. And that guys is one wet coat and that's it. Don't do too much as long as it looks like flat and even shiny a little bit. That's it. Don't paint anymore. Wow, it's really nice. I just can't. You gotta see it in person. <laughs> I'm gonna drill some holes on the light buckets. It's time to paint the light buckets. I'm gonna pour in the transparent resin from Hay Gears into this little bottle. I'm gonna make a special light bulb for the tail light. I'm gluing two LEDs together using transparent resin from Hay Gears and a UV flashlight. This way I can have two different lights at the same time. So the small LED is red. 
the big LED is orange and it's flashing. It's time for some stickers. Things are not so organized. I'm just trying to get whatever I can get done, done. Almost there. Just a few things. I didn't make the side mirrors and some of these parts. I just bought 3D file from the internet and then do some modification a little bit to make them fit perfectly. I got my little prints, so sand them out, paint, and then install. I'm completely blown away by the details in these small parts. making a little black sand window sticker so it's a uh, print and then cut It's time to wire it up. There's a problem. I'm gonna have to trim this out. I think I got it. Finally at the final stage, I'm gonna wire the LED lights and then we're gonna install a GTR R35 sound. You know what? The calipers have to be silver because movie car. Let's get it done. Safety first. 
I use body post to send the signal to the body through the magnets here. For some reason, it doesn't work. Maybe the signal is not strong enough, but I tried things and found that using the servo reverser before sending the signal to the body helped. So I got one for channel 1 and one for channel 2. And it works now. Bro, insane, I'm telling you. The clutch is engaged. Install the backfire LED light. I use a programmable micro chip and then did the little program to make the backfire. <laughs> oh my goodness. So, what do we have so far? We got the hood lashes, windshield wipers, side mirrors, hood pins, exhaust tips, boiler bracket brace, body posts, and steering wheel. Adjustable suspension. Engine sound. You can rev it. There's a clutch right here. Magnet body power system. You can turn the LED light on and off. Turn signal.
today you have it Brian's Blue GTR R35 with a crazy body kit. I hope you enjoyed and find this helpful. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you join the channel's membership, you'll be able to use some cool custom emojis in the comment section. I will see you again next time.